Alright everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to take a deep dive into Circuit City. So if you're not familiar with this retailer, well, they were pretty much an electronics and appliance store, similar to what Best Buy is nowadays. In fact, at the time of their demise, they were the number two electronics store in the United States. They pretty much sold anything from video games to washing machines. At their peak, Circuit City had hundreds of stores in the United States, and they even operated the source in Canada. Their building designs were very unique, and they were pretty easy to spot, especially their famous plug design. Although very few, there are still some abandoned stores around. Most of them have been converted into other stores, but yeah, for the most part, you can definitely tell they used to be a Circuit City. Anyways, they were a company that just seemed way too big to fail. But after some missteps in management, the recession of the late 2000s really did them in. The concept for Circuit City was developed by Samuel Wurzel way back in the late 40s. The story says that he was vacationing in Richmond, Virginia, and he witnessed the growing popularity of TV while he was there. He would actually end up moving to Virginia and he would open up an electronics store called Ward's the following year. The new store concept was very much successful, and by 1959, he would be operating four locations. Throughout the 60s and 70s, Ward's would just continue to grow, albeit at a slow pace. They would open new stores in New York, Alabama, Washington, D.C., and California. Their stores consisted of a large showroom of display models and demos, Something fairly unique for that time period. All employees worked on commission, and they were very knowledgeable about the products that they were selling. This was something that they were known for, and this would be what sets them apart from other retailers. In 1981, Wards officially changed their name to Circuit City. At this point, their company's sales were nearly $200 million annually. So during the 1980s, their growth strategy was to acquire smaller electronics chains and convert them into Circuit City. This worked out fairly well for them, as by 1984, they had 114 locations. In 1985, they started a new prototype store called Circuit City Superstore. Basically, these new stores had walls of TVs and themed aisles. They also implemented strategies such as putting more desirable items in the back of the store. All these things seemed to pay off, as by this time they were the number one electronics store, and they were the number two appliance store, second only to Sears. In fact, they had the opportunity to buy the number two electronics store, Best Buy, for $30 million back in 1988, but Circuit City, regrettably, rejected that offer. In 1989, Circuit City had over 250 locations and nearly $2 billion in sales. So as the 1990s roll in, Circuit City is still very successful, and they are still the number one electronics store, and they would just continue to grow from here. So they would for sure change things up a bit in 1993. They would run a used car dealership called CarMax. It was definitely a change of pace for Circuit City, but hey, it paid off for them as at that time, CarMax was a very profitable investment. Anyways, back to the retail side of things. They would just continue to grow, as in the early 1990s, home electronics were booming, with popular items such as home audio, VCRs, and computers. Although they are very successful, they still had competition, as Best Buy and Circuit City were neck and neck as far as sales. They were very competitive and involved in an intense price war with one another. The edge Circuit City had was still their customer service and their knowledge of the products. However, things would change as Best Buy became the number one home electronics retailer in 1996. In 1999, Circuit City had 500 locations and $20 billion in sales. This was also the year they would launch their website. In the year 2000, the stores were starting to show their age, and they would once again be remodeled. This time, the stores were modeled to be more of a self-service design. On top of that, they added shopping carts along with a centralized checkout. So here's where things start to decline a bit, and many people point to this as being their biggest misstep. 
In 2001, they decided to discontinue appliance sales. This made up nearly 14% of their overall annual sales. And at this point, they were still number two, only to Sears. This decision was made for a couple of reasons. First off, they were concerned about competition from Home Depot and Lowe's. And on top of that, they wanted to make more room for other things such as video games and home computers. This was just bad timing for Circuit City, as they missed out selling appliances during the housing boom of the early 2000s. Anyways, in 2002, CarMax was starting to struggle, so they spun it off into its own company. In 2003, they dissolved their commission pay, and with that, they would lay off nearly 4,000 employees. It was estimated the company saved nearly $130 million with this decision. In 2004, they announced an exclusive agreement with Verizon Wireless. They would only sell Verizon phones in their stores. At this point, they had over 600 Circuit City locations, and they were reporting an $85 million loss annually. Anyways, they would end up buying a Canadian-based company called Entertan for $284 million. Entertan ran several Canadian stores such as Radio Shack, Rogers, and Battery Plus. However, they would end up getting sued by Radio Shack for using their name in Canada, and all the stores would be rebranded into the source. Circuit City is still losing money at this point, but they would renovate their stores in January of 2007. Their plan was to utilize the smaller spaces in their store for things such as video games and accessories. But they may have gotten in a little over their head, as just a month later, they announced the closure of seven U.S. stores, along with 62 of their newly acquired Canadian locations. And with that, their CFO would resign. So things are starting to look pretty rough for Circuit City at this point, and it would just get worse, as in March of that same year, they reduced their starting wage, and they announced the layoff of additional 3,400 better paid employees. As you might suspect, the decision to get rid of experienced employees, well, that immediately backfired, as sales declined even more. So with the company struggling, Blockbuster, believe it or not, offered to buy them for just $1 billion, but they quickly retracted their bid, citing the market conditions and the recession. So with all their problems, on November 10, 2008, they announced they would be filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection, and they would be closing 155 U.S. stores, and they would lay off nearly 17% of their workforce. Their stock price would drop below $1 a share, and they were delisted from the New York Stock Exchange. And with that, their CEO would resign. Things are looking desperately bad at this point, and Circuit City said they would not be able to continue operations if they did not find a buyer for the company. And, well, that would never happen. So in January of 2009, they converted bankruptcy into Chapter 7, and they began a liquidation sale. The final day of store operations was on March 8, 2009. After that, all remaining 567 U.S. stores would be closed. All source stores would eventually be sold to Bell Canada. The city is done. The second largest electronics chain in the world is going out of business. It will close all 567 U.S. stores by March, including two in Spokane. There are 34,000 Circuit City employees across the United States who are going to lose their jobs this spring. There's 100 Circuit City employees in the Spokane area that are going to lose. Tells us all that uh, we're not safe, any of us, for having a job um, to retirement. It's just really kind of a sad situation. Now, the local... This isn't 100% the end for Circuit City, as their assets would be sold to a third party in April of 2009 and they would actually operate as an online retailer until 2012. The naming rights were once again sold, and their website was once again active. The new owner plans to continue online sales. Along with that, they plan on building physical Circuit City locations in the near future. So anyway guys, that's the story of Circuit City. I hope you found this entertaining, and if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. It helps me out way more than you probably think. 
And if you have suggestions for a future video, please let me know about that in the comments because I love to read them. Thank you guys so much and I will see you all next time.